My brothers and sisters, yes, we do have enemies. We may know some of them, and perhaps we don't know some of them. But the biggest enemy is the devil, shaitan. He makes us think at times beyond the level that we're supposed to be thinking upon, and we start doubting people. He creates fear in our hearts. He creates fear of that which we don't even know. He makes us doubt good people sometimes, and we begin to think that perhaps they are our enemies, yet they're good people. And sometimes he makes us draw closer to the real enemies so that we become those who have lost either in our relationship with Allah or in any other way. So this is shaitan. He is the biggest enemy. But... Besides shaitan, we do have people perhaps who don't like us, people who want to see our downfall for some reason or another. If we were to think too much about this, we might end up in a situation that's not so good. It may create a crisis within our minds, in our lives, and we will start worrying. We will start looking at everyone with the eye of skepticism. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah An-Nisa, that he knows better than you who your enemies are. Subhanallah. If you look at verse number 45 of Surah An-Nisa, look at the comfort that Allah is giving us by telling us, we know you have enemies, but we know your enemies really better than you do. We know who is your enemy. How many of us have actually accused the innocent of being an enemy? How many of us have befriended an enemy? So we're sometimes confused because we judge people. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. May He empower us to be able to distinguish correctly using the cor correct criteria. And that would be to involve Allah in all of this, to pray to Allah for protection, for indeed He is the protector. If you develop a correct relationship with Allah, He gives you the ability to distinguish. You have a feeling within you, and that feeling would be guided by Allah in such a way that Perhaps, say if you're doubting someone, you don't have to create enmity with them, but you're just a little bit more careful. It will not cost you anything to be a bit more careful with particular people. Time may tell if they were genuine or not, and you may be able to draw closer to them at some point. But sometimes with us, we drop our guard and we befriend those who are dangerous for our development, for our well-being, be it from a material perspective or from a religious, spiritual perspective. So verse number 45, Allah says, وَاللَّهُ أَعْلَمُ بِأَعْدَائِكُمْ وَكَفَى بِاللَّهِ وَلِيًّا وَكَفَى بِاللَّهِ نَصِيرًا Indeed, Allah knows better who your enemies are. Subhanallah. So leave it to Allah. Don't, don't overburden yourself with the stress. Don't over stress about these things because that will create a huge crisis. You want comfort? Leave it to Allah. Allah knows better than you who your enemies are. Wow. Subhanallah. When I sit and think of these words, I actually am so comforted because immediately after that, Allah says, Allah is sufficient for you as a protector. Allah is definitely sufficient for you as a protector, which means Allah will protect you. All you have to do, develop your relationship with Allah. Leave the rest in His hands. They won't be able to harm you. People fear, they worry, they are scared. Subhanallah. Scared of what? Don't be scared. Do you have a good relationship with Allah? Yes. Well then forget about it. He will protect you. He will definitely be there for you. And this is why Allah says, وَكَفَى بِاللَّهِ nasira. And Allah is sufficient as a helper for you. Even if Allah allows someone to hurt you to a certain degree in a certain way, Allah knows in the bigger picture, somehow it, would, it will prove to have been better for you. How? I don't know. Allah knows. But I lay my trust in Allah. How many of us have seen the positives 10 years later out of a negative that we were stressing about 10 years back? So this is something that we have to understand. Allah's plan is unique. It's amazing.
Remember, if you were to repeat this verse, وَاللَّهُ أَعْلَمُ بِأَعْدَائِكُمْ وَكَفَى بِاللَّهِ وَلِيًّا وَكَفَى بِاللَّهِ نَصِيرًا With conviction in your heart that Allah knows best who your enemies are. He is sufficient as a protector. He is sufficient as a helper. And you have conviction in that regard. No one can harm you. No one will be able to hurt you. Allah will protect you and Allah will help you. My brothers and sisters, what great comfort there is. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about these enemies sometimes. And sometimes we become enemies of others. We harm others. So as much as we want to be protected from harm, we need to protect others from our harm. That's a very, very balanced statement. If you're a true believer, it's not all about yourself. It's about us. I don't want to be harmed. So I definitely will not harm. And I'm going to go a step further and help those who I think may be harmed by others. I'll try to protect others as well so that Allah will protect me. So Allah speaks about a certain quality that's very dangerous and we need to protect ourselves from it and we need to talk about it and we need to be protected from it as well. What is this quality? In verse number 54 of Surah An-Nisa, Allah speaks about jealousy. And what it does, don't allow yourself to be jealous of others. Thank Allah for bestowing upon others his favor. The most you could do is to ask Allah to give you a similar favor, but never ask Allah to extinguish a favor he's given someone else just because you want it. That's not fair. That will bring about a crisis that you wouldn't have imagined. Subhanallah. So Allah is telling you, don't be jealous of others. And the way he's worded it, he says, أَمْ يَحْسُدُونَ النَّاسَ عَلَى مَا آتَاهُمُ اللَّهُ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ فَقَدْ آتَيْنَا آلَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ وَآتَيْنَاهُمْ مُلْكًا عَظِيمًا Are they jealous of what Allah has bestowed some from his virtue? Subhanallah. Are they jealous of what Allah has bestowed others from his virtue? Allah says, you know what? We have bestowed the family of Ibrahim with revelation, with wisdom, and we have given them a lot in terms of material wealth too. Subhanallah, we've given them kingdom. So Allah made them rulers. Allah made them prophets. Allah gave them so much. Subhanallah, Allah, Allah says, don't be jealous of that. Never. Don't be jealous when Allah's given someone else wealth. When Allah has given someone else good health, good looks, a lovely family. When Allah has given someone else power, authority. When Allah has given someone else piety. Don't ever be jealous. Do you know why? Who gave them? Allah gave them. By you being jealous, you automatically become, become unhappy with what Allah has chosen for someone. So you're unhappy with Allah. That's what it is. And if you're unhappy with Allah, you have plunged yourself into the biggest possible crisis.